What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Mechanism version 10. And today we are going to be going over five times ore processing. Now this is the highest tier of ore processing that you can get in Mechanism. And I gotta be honest, right out the gate with you guys, this thing is a bit of a doozy to set up. Now four times ore processing takes roughly eight or nine machines to go from start to finish, from inputting one ore to getting out the four corresponding ingots. And quite honestly, that's relatively easy to set up for the amount of you know power you're getting from it. It is very powerful to get four times or multiplication that easily, but five times is really where you start to cross the line into being actually relatively difficult to set up. And an example of that is we are going to be doubling, if not tripling the amount of machines needed to actually run this setup compared to the prior tier of four times, which of course is pretty crazy considering we're really only getting one additional ingot per ore that we put in. Now I will say that I do think it's worth it if you are playing, especially in a mod pack, considering you are going to have builds that require tens of thousands of ingots. And of course, if you're playing for an extended period of time, getting an additional ingot per ore that you put in is eventually going to add up. So I would say I think it's worth it. I actually think it's relatively fun to set up, but just letting you guys know what you're getting into. Now today we are going to cover all the information from start to finish, not just upgrading from the prior tier, simply because this is the final version and there's gonna to be tons of people that come to this video who do not have four times or processing already set up. And I'm not about to send them to another video to find all that info. So for those of you who are just upgrading four times, no need to worry. We will start out with the new info on how to set up five times, and then we will continue on all the way through the final portion of it where you get your ingots out for those of you who do not know anything about the setup and are starting fresh. So we're also not gonna do the crafting today because there are so many machines to go over. And if you look at my inventory right here, we have everything on us that we need. And I tried to kind of sort through it because some of these do not stack properly or set up properly, simply because we demolished the four times ore processing setup. So some of these actually have things already inside of them, which makes it a little bit weird to work with. But we're just gonna go over today the different machines that you need to actually set this up in the way I am. And then we're gonna jump into it because there is no way I'm crafting all this stuff on camera. So. We're gonna need three electric pumps, three quantum entangle porters, three chemical infusers, a chemical oxidizer, a pressurized reaction chamber, a rotary condensator, a basic chemical tank or whatever chemical tank you want. We're just gonna be using it to vent out gas, a three electrolytic separators, a chemical dissolution chamber, a chemical washer, a chemical crystallizer, and then the basic smelting factory, basic injection factory, basic purifying factory, basic crushing factory, and basic enriching factory. Now for all of these basic factories, you can have the regular block, the non-factory version, you could have the basic factory version, or you could have any of the higher tiers. It really doesn't matter. Eventually you are going to run into some serious bottlenecks in this setup, and it's gonna be unavoidable because some of these blocks cannot be made into factories, so you're gonna need multiple of them to keep up with the factories. Uh, other ones, you're just simply gonna need multiple because they process faster and in higher quantities than others. So it is unavoidable that you are not gonna have this thing running with everything going at the exact same speed, that is fine. But today we're simply gonna go over a one-off setup and you can adjust it anywhere you need. So I'm gonna make it so hopefully you guys understand how each individual block works and then you'll have the intelligence to go and adjust it accordingly on your own. So now we are going to head downstairs and we're gonna start setting this thing up because we got a lot of stuff to get through. So we got some room right over here uh, to set this up on this wall. And the way that I plan on doing it is basically to divide it into two different setups. And the reason I'm doing this is because the majority of the machines that get tacked onto this when upgrading from four to five times is the production of sulfuric acid. All the machines that are required to do that, it, it's that makes up probably nine tenths of the machines that we're actually adding on to an already existing four times setup. Now, if you've played with mechanism at all, you've probably already set up sulfuric acid production. It was one of the first videos we did in the series because that is how you make fissile fuel. Majority of the production of fissile fuel, which is what goes into fission reactors, which gates pretty much everything in late game mechanism, so you eventually need it. Um, it that's what makes up most of the machines needed for the production of that is 
sulfuric acid. So we're going to be doing pretty much the exact same setup. So you guys have probably already seen this, but we're going to be doing that setup and then making the slurry, which is the beginning of the five times ore processing in one section. And then we are going to be quantum entangle portering, if you want to call it that, the slurry over to a second section of machines where the rest of the ore processing takes place. Now, the reason we're doing this is because I'm trying to keep it as clean and simple as possible with as little piping and all the mess of cables and all that. And so this is how we do it, because otherwise you're going to be having an even bigger mess trying to put these things all squished together and get everything done properly. So I did my best to simplify it for you guys. So hopefully it's all good to go. So. The first thing that we are going to start out with, like I said, is the sulfuric acid production. And that begins with an electric pump and us getting out a bucket of water from in here. And I prepped a bunch because we need a ton of buckets of water. So we're gonna start it, let's say right over here. And we are going, I don't even have inventory room at this point. We'll put down the bucket of water right here. And we're gonna put this back in so we can actually pick some of this stuff up and we can put down the first electric pump right here. Now this electric pump is going to be supplying water for a, an electrolytic separator, which I believe we already have one with some water in it, but we're actually gonna be using this one. So we're gonna be supplying water to an electrolytic separator, which is going to be right here. And we're actually gonna be also supplying it to the pressurized reaction chamber, because if we go to sulfuric acid, the difficult part to get is sulfur trioxide. The water vapor is really easy to get. We're gonna process that at the very end of this. But if we look at the recipe for the sulfur trioxide, the difficult part of this is going to be the sulfur dioxide. And to get this, we are going to need to use sulfur dust. And lo and behold, the recipe for this is gonna require water and oxygen. And if you noticed, in one of the later recipes, we also required oxygen. So the way that we are gonna handle this is by pulling the oxygen from the electrolytic separator down out here to two machines and also utilizing the water from this electric pump to also go to two different machines. So we're gonna pull this one right at the top right here and the water is going to go into the electrolytic separator and then it's also going to go into the pressurized reaction chamber if we are able to locate that in this whole mess of machines in here. Oh my gosh, here it is. Okay, so that's also going to go to the pressurized reaction chamber, which is going to go right here. So there we go, that's all good. Now the pressurized reaction chamber needs to go to the chemical oxidizer. So that's gonna be put right above it. And thankfully, as we slowly get some of these machines put down, uh, we don't have to worry about having such a mess in here, but the chemical oxidizer is gonna go directly above that. Now, this is going to bring us to the stage in the recipe where we have sulfur dioxide. And if we look at the uses for this, we're only gonna have the one, and that's to combine it in a chemical infuser with oxygen, which is what we were getting from the initial electrolytic separator. And the one thing that I wanna note right here is that we are going to have the oxygen coming in the bottom of this because we need oxygen here, but you can see that if we have power on the back, we've pretty much used up all the sides on this thing except this right side. So you could make it more compact. And well, I guess we, there's one thing I'm forgetting. Um, we need to put the basic chemical tank down right on the front of this thing because we need to get rid of, I believe it's hydrogen that it produces. It'll stop producing if you don't get rid of it. There's no option to dump it in here. So you need to pull that out the front. But now what I was saying is if we have power on the back, then we've used up all the faces on this thing except the right side. And so if we want to fully automate this, fully automate it completely, then we need to have this right side open so that we can either put the items in using some pipes or I am going to use a QIO exporter and put it down on this side. And we're gonna hook this up to our system later and have it pull the coal that we need to put in here directly from our QIO system, which as you can see has plenty of coal because it's being put in there directly from the digital miner and that'll put it in here. Now in the prior version we set up of this, it did not have this, I was manually putting it in. It was a huge pain, not doing that again. So we're moving everything over one to the right after the pressurized reaction chamber to make room for this, which makes it one block less compact, but it's gonna make it a lot easier for me. 
So what we need to do then is bring the pressurized tubes over one more to bring the oxygen. And then over here is where we put one of the chemical infusers. And I believe none of these should have anything in them right now. So we should be good to put that down here. And then we're going to take another chemical infuser and put that down directly next to it because the sulfur trioxide immediately goes into another one to make sulfur, sulfuric acid. So there's gonna be another one right here and we need to use the pressurized tube right here to bring over the, what is it that we make in here? The sulfur dioxide, oh, so many chemicals, um, the sulfur dioxide over to this chemical infuser too. So now what we need to do is set the uh, inputs for the gases to be on the top and the bottom. Uh, I don't actually know if it matters since technically the red, which is going to be the oxygen, I believe, should be on the bottom for these. I don't think it matters from what I recall, but if you wanna set it up like that, you can. But so it is going to have now the input on the top and the bottom. Uh, one of the nice things that happened in the later versions of Mechanism, if you're confused as to why you can do this, earlier versions, you were not able to adjust a lot of the inputs for certain machines like this that you can see have very specific graphics for inputs and outputs on them, um, but now you can. So that's why it might look a little bit strange, but it works. So right here, this one will be all set to make the sulfur oh my gosh, the sulfur trioxide. And then over here, this is the one that is going to be making the sulfuric acid. And so this is basically the final step in the production, uh, except we need to input water vapor. And the way you make water vapor is using the rotary condensator. So we're gonna put that down right over here. And then we need to pump water into this. But we also need to pump water into one other thing for this setup. And it's the reason I'm setting this up the way I am. And so the pump is going to go right here. We are going to get another bucket of water, which is, if I search it up, since I can't apparently see it, uh, we'll put this down right here. It could go right under here if you were just trying to make sulfuric acid. But because we are combining part of the five times ore processing over here, those machines are going to go, actually we need to move this down one now that I'm thinking about it, because those machines are gonna go right over here. So if I could, oh my gosh, I am, thank God I didn't break those pipes if they had any nuclear waste in them, but I am absolutely butchering this. So we'll get right, we need to go down one more. So the water needs to be right here. There we go, put the water right there. And then we are going to put the pump right here. And as I was saying, if I could actually do this correctly, the reason we're doing this is because we need to utilize the water from this for two different machines. The first one is the rotary condensator, which right now needs to be reversed. So now it's decondensating to make water into water vapor. And we need to make sure that it is outputting on the left side, which it is. So it'll go in here and we need to make sure that this is accepting from the right side and accepting from the left side. So there we go. And once this starts running, that'll be good. But we also need to use it for the new machines in the second one in the five times ore processing process, which is the chemical washer. So we are going to start out with the chemical dissolution chamber, which goes right here. And we are just going to make it so that the gases can be input on the top and that the output is on the right. And that's actually, it's not even the right output. The right output is the slurries tab, which is on the right. So there we go. And the chemical washer is gonna go right next to that. So basically what happens is the sulfuric acid that's made in the infuser right up here goes into the chemical dissolution chamber. This is where the five times ore processing actually starts. And so you're going to input your ore right in here, which we are going to do using another QIO exporter. And then this is going to essentially dissolve in the sulfuric acid, your ore, and make a dirty slurry of the corresponding ore. Now you're going to take that, input it into the chemical washer, which is going to take water and the dirty slurry, and it's going to provide you with a clean slurry of the corresponding ore. And that is where this setup is going to end. So what we're gonna do is 
come right here and put down a quantum entanglo porter. And this is going to be the quantum entanglo porter that is going to carry the slurry for us from this to the other setup. And so we're going to set this to slurry. We're going to set that frequency. And we are going to make sure that we don't want gases in here because we have the pipe down here, which is piping uh, radioactive material. So we want to make sure that that's not a possibility. But we are going to come to the slurries tab and make it so that it is input right on the top there. So this will get the slurry in it. And I'm going to get back up here. Uh, that'll be all good to go. So we just need to actually power up these machines over here. And I think we'll end up using probably another quantum entanglement porter to actually give these guys power. But let's get out our cable, run it through the back. And I believe that in setting up the QIO importers and exporters, that's the last set of stuff we need to do for this one. And I really need to take this thing off of being super fast. But here we go. We'll just line the back of all the machines that need it here and Oh, apparently it thinks that I wanted to put it up there, but place, oh, it's because there's a torch here, right? So we'll place these down and then we'll just run it along. Oh, if it'll let me, we can just put it right there and down here. And it's unavoidable that there will be some machines that don't actually need it. Uh, so there we go. I believe everything should be connected now. And we need to set this to dumping excess. And we should be good if we actually put down another quantum entanglement porter that actually has power in it. So if we were to take this one, and now that I'm thinking about it, we probably need one extra. Do I have another one in here? I do. Okay, so we're going to put down one over here. And we can just throw this down and put it to power. Set that check the energy, put it on outputting, put it on ejecting, and there we go. You can see everything is running, and now all we need to do is grab a stack of coal out of here and come over here, and oh, that one is not the correct uh, filter to put on this. So we'll set it to the correct frequency, we'll put the item stack of coal in there, save it, and now, if we come over here and configure the side to make sure that this is input right here, you can see that it puts the coal right in there and it's going to start processing. And then we need to make sure that it is set to output out the top. Make sure that this is set to input in the bottom. Is this, this probably isn't set to auto eject. There we go. Now this is set properly for this. Go to the side configs. It's outputting on the right, which means we should be getting our uh, sulfur dioxide over here, which means we're getting sulfur trioxide. And then if we come to the gases, we want to output on the right, which means we'll have sulfur trioxide over here, which means we're getting sulfuric acid. We got the water vapor coming in side config this to set the output out the bottom. And right here we have sulfuric acid in our chemical dissolution chamber. That is all good to go. And then over here, if we want to check to make sure that the output for slurries, yep, we got that set on the right. Over here, we have the input correctly. Was this on auto eject? Yes. So now the last thing we have to do is set the tags for this. And we'll set it to all ores in our system. There we go. And I don't actually believe I have any ores coming in, um, but that would, if we set it to the correct frequency, that would input any ore into here for it to start being processed. So that's great. Uh, now, the only thing that we will have to do, since something apparently, oh, right here. So we found the backlog. We need to make sure that we set this hydrogen to dumping excess. There we go. Now it should continue producing more in a second once this kicks one up there. So there we go. And then we need to make sure on this one, once again, that we have the gases uh, outputting out the front to get rid of the hydrogen, which will be venting eventually out of this chemical tank. 
So now everything is completely done over here. We will eventually have our clean slurry, which will come out right over here in the chemical washer. And we can move on to the portion of the setup over here, which is the easier portion. Everyone can take a breath. We're on the easier part now, so thank goodness for that. So the first thing we're gonna start out over here with is a quantum entanglo porter. And we're gonna put that down right here. And this is going to be set to our power. And I believe this is the one, yes, that has brine in it. And so we are going to then take out our two electrolytic separators, one which has brine and one which has water. And the brine one is going to go on the top of this. So it's gonna go right here. And then we are gonna put the water one down right over here. But first we're gonna put a pump down below it. So we're just gonna break our way down there. And I need to set this to normal speed so that we don't break through everything. And now we need another bucket of water. So we'll grab that out, put that down right there. We'll put down our cable there so we can put down our pump in the proper orientation. And there we go. And we're gonna put down an electrolytic separator right on top of that. Now this one is going to be taking water and it's gonna be making oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen is gonna be dumping excess, but we are still going to, I believe, use that. So we need a chemical infuser, which should be this one right here. That's gonna get put down here and this takes hydrogen and chlorine. The chlorine, which comes from this separator over here, which should have the gases set to being output two to the right. And this one is going to be dumping the sodium. And this chlorine is going to be coming over into the chemical infuser here. And then the electrolytic separator down here is going to be set to output the gas on the left, which is the hydrogen to the top, and the output on the right, which is the oxygen, um, that is going to be outputting to the right, to the machine that's over there. And the last thing we wanna check is to make sure that this is receiving fluid from the bottom because it needs to get the brine from this quantum entanglo porter, which we also wanna make sure is able to output uh, the fluid properly too. So there we go, everything should be good to go there. And that is how we are going to get our hydrogen chloride, which is needed for the basic injecting factory, which is the start of the four times ore processing. So we're putting this down right here. This is going to have the hydrogen chloride coming in from the where is it? Coming in from the left side. And we're gonna put down then the basic, where is it? The basic purifying factory directly below that. So the reason I'm putting these down first is because these are what you're going to get from all these different machines over here. This is where they're used. And this is where we also orient ourselves because we now have the uh, other machine that was required in the five times ore processing upgrade, which is the chemical crystallizer. So this is actually going to be the start of the process. And so we're gonna put it down right on top of the basic injecting factory. And this one is going to have a quantum entangle porter attached to it right over here. And this is gonna be set on the slurry frequency with slurries being output to the left with auto eject on. And this one will be accepting slurries from the right and then it's going to be outputting items out the bottom with auto eject on. And so what this is gonna do is the clean slurry will come in here, this will be powered, it turns it into a crystal, and this is where the five times happens and moves to the beginning of where the four times was. So once you have this set up and tacked it onto our already existing four times setup we've gone over in this series, you are good to go. Everything should be running perfectly fine. But now we're gonna be covering the remainder of the setup, which is going to be simply putting on the basic crushing factory, enriching factory, and smelting. And I believe it's in that order uh, if we wanna take a quick look at it. So if we look at the gold ore, if we look at the uses, we go to the dirty slurry, the clean slurry, the crystallizer, purification chamber, crusher, enricher, smelter. So there we go, so the crusher will be there. The enricher will be there, the smelter will be there, and then we just verify that these are all proper. Input from the left, output to the top, auto eject on. Input from the bottom, output to the right, auto eject on. 
input from the left output to the bottom with auto eject on. And then the last thing that we set up is a QIO importer right here on the bottom of this to bring everything back into our system, set the frequency to our storage and import without a filter is in fact on. So there we go. Now we have our setup fully done. We just need to power this one which means we grab out our universal cables and thankfully we should be getting power already from that quantum entanglement porter. So there we go. And now the system is powered too. So outside of upgrading these, obviously these need some muffling upgrades because they're super loud. I'm going to hop off camera. I'm going to go get us some ore so we can actually verify that I did in fact do this correctly and I'm not leading you guys down the incorrect path, but I will hop back in a second with some ore for us to test this out with. Okay guys, so we are back. I managed to get a couple ore, a couple different types. So we got some iron, some uranium, some copper, and some gold here. And we should be good now with everything. It's fully upgraded. So it's got some energy upgrades, some speed upgrades, and some muffling upgrades, thankfully, because these things were super loud. I'm gonna have to go in when I'm editing the video and actually reduce the volume on these things because they are so unbelievably loud. Now it should be basically silent, but now we should be able to see if we put in using our portable QIO dashboard, the different ores here, that they will all get processed right here. So you can see the iron one is being done right now. Then we have the copper, which is being done. And over here, we are processing the different slurries. And then over here, it's processing them here. So you can see already where I was telling you guys that you will run into a bottleneck. And this one really isn't too concerning to me, honestly. Um, but you can see here that the chemical crystallizer really takes its sweet time, even when it is upgraded with full speed upgrades. And so it's, it's pretty slow. Now this tends to happen at the actual ore multiplication step. And so I've always said that, but this is that step. And you can see here because it uses 200 millibuckets when each ore produces a thousand. So this is essentially going to take like five times as long as pretty much all the other steps that have come before it since it needs to process it uh, five times as much. So uh, chances are, if you want to kind of reduce the weight in the bottleneck in this setup, the chemical crystallizer is going to be where you should probably start. Um, but as you can see, everything is functioning perfectly. All the stuff is making its way into the ingot form over here. And the sulfuric acid production is working very well over here. It's actually pretty much backed up and we have our coal automatically being pulled into our pressurized reaction chamber over here. So everything now is automated. I don't have to touch anything. I set up my digital miner, I let it run, and I will get five times or from it for the duration of me playing through this, I, I don't really call it a mod pack, but through this series. And for you guys, it would be through the duration of your mod pack, which is awesome. I definitely think it's worth doing. I think it's super fun to set up. There's a ton of machines. There's a ton of chemistry that goes on here on the left side, at least, which I love. Even my fiance, who is getting her PhD in chemistry, um, thought it was pretty funny when she overheard me recording the first video on this that I was talking about, you know, the sulfur dioxide into sulfur trioxide into sulfuric acid, all that stuff. She thought it was hysterical. She had no idea why I would be talking about that stuff, but I thought it was funny, too. Uh, so I definitely enjoy setting this stuff up. Hopefully you guys did too and didn't actually find it to be too much of a pain, but that is going to be it for today, guys. I know it's a little bit of a longer episode, but we had a ton of stuff to cover. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Best of luck spending all the new found ingots that you will have. And I will talk to you guys later. Rolling past me, all my memories rolling vastly.